Good evening. I hope you packed your coat because tonight we're taking off into the northern skies as we fly with Finnair up to Helsinki to try their new business class product. Tonight we'll start our journey in Geneva, Switzerland, where we'll board a Finnair A320 bound for Helsinki, Finland. Once there, we'll have an overnight layover and explore the frozen Helsinki Harbor before heading back to the airport and hopping on an A330 bound for Doha. While en route, we'll experience all Finnair has to offer in their new Air Lounge product. So we're starting our trip today from the, uh, the Geneva airport um, in a hotel here. I got a little bit of a late flight, so I kind of have a bit of a relaxing morning to just kind of walk around and see what Geneva has to offer. So I'm going to head out in a little bit, explore, come back, grab my bags, and we'll head off to the airport. Uh, today we're taking Finnair. Um, all the way through to Doha where we'll connect on a Qatar Airlines flight that uh, will take us down to the Seychelles. But um, for today, we're just taking uh, Finnair in their uh, inter-European business class from Geneva all the way up to Helsinki where we'll spend the night in Helsinki. 17-hour uh, layover there. Then uh, tomorrow morning, I'll explore Helsinki for a little bit. some wonderful spring weather made for just the right conditions to get out and walk the streets of Geneva before heading back to the airport to start my journey. I arrived back at the airport and after a little bit of confusion and wandering through a packed Geneva airport, I came to the check-in spot for Finnair and several other airlines who had been lumped together. Just dropped my bag off. It's uh, time to start heading through security. Uh, one thing that I will note in this airport is uh, it kind of seems like Finnair is lumped together with a whole bunch of other airlines. And right now it seems like the airport's a very busy place. So uh, there's two lines. There's an economy bag drop that has, I don't know, maybe six agents and a business bag drop that has two agents. Um, so despite having a separate you know, priority access and, and business line, um, there is a bit of a line. Uh, when I went through, fortunately, there were only three people ahead of me, so it didn't take terribly long. Um, however, looking at it now, the line is now amassed to maybe 12 people. These visas, uh, you could be waiting there a little longer. So if you are flying out of Geneva, I would highly recommend getting here, maybe a little earlier than you would have thought of. Having made it through security, I went towards the lounges. They're all kind of on the second level here. I went past the Swissport Lounge, which is what Finnair has assigned to me. Um, I guess due to being business class with Finnair, I got that. But I also have One World uh, status. So I was able to come to the British Airways Lounge with my One World status. And uh, it kind of seems like this lounge is almost entirely empty. Whereas when I passed the other lounge, there were maybe five or six people just standing in line outside, so I can only imagine how busy it was on the inside. Um, you know, when I get done here, maybe I'll sweep over there before I get to my gate and check out how many people there are. I found the British Airways Lounge in the Geneva Airport to be exactly what an airport lounge should strive to be. A quiet reprieve from the hustle and bustle of the airport. The lounge in its entirety was well appointed with an elegant look. The seats, while not the most comfortable, appeared to be quite clean. I found the food selection to be limited, and the only hot option they had was some sort of a pesto pasta and a soup. However, there were several snack options, and there were several desserts. The drink selection was self-service, however, British Airways provided a great selection from which to choose. With 15 minutes to go before boarding time, I made my way to my gate. Unbeknownst to me, this would turn out to be quite a trek. You see, my gate was in an isolated pod with the other D-gates, and to get there you had to transit a tunnel. I was pushing my departure time when I did finally make it to my gate with just a minute to spare. As it turns out, this was a good thing because the pod of gates was packed with two other EasyJet flights leaving around the same time as my Finnair flight. It was a bit hot in the corral despite the cool Swiss evening outside. By the time boarding was finally announced, I embraced the cool air as I made my way to the air stairs and onto the A320 that would take me on to Helsinki. Aside from the cool night air, who doesn't love to just take a minute and enjoy the views of the plane on the landing at the top of the air stairs? My seat 
today was seat 1D, an aisle seat in the first row. I was happy to find that the seats in the business cabin had a bottle of finished spring water laid out for us. It really is a nice touch as I was a bit dehydrated from my trek to get to my gate tonight. As an av geek, I originally wanted the window seat so as to not disturb anyone filming the takeoff. But, after sitting down, I was glad I had the seat that I had. You see, here we run into the bulkhead conundrum again, where despite not having someone able to recline into you, you lose the space afforded under the seat in front of you. My seat at least allowed me to stretch out into the aisle due to the bulkhead partition only being halfway in front of my seat. Aside from the bulkhead features, the seat was fairly basic as far as inner European business class goes. The seat material is some burlap-esque cloth I didn't really care for. The seat is a standard 17 and a half inch wide seat. This being in the front row, the armrests are solid with the tray table in them. The tray table that does fold out is a 50-50 split variety folding out into a full tray table in this row. Other rows have standard tray tables. There is somewhat limited recline in these seats and there is no charging port. However, there is a coat hook on the bullhead in front of the seat that says not to use it during taxi takeoff or landing. So. I'm not really sure what the functional value of these coat hooks are. The seats do, however, have overhead air vents, which I appreciated after the sauna experience in the D-Terminal, but hey, this is Finnair after all, so maybe the sauna is just hyping us up for the Helsinki experience. This wouldn't be a proper Finnair flight if I didn't get the blueberry juice. And that said, the absolute pinnacle of the Finnair experience is the glass where it's served in. Look at all the fine embellishments in this glass. Finnair has been using this iconic product in their premium cabin since 1969. That's over 50 years of using this same iconic glassware. About an hour into the flight, meal service started. A perk of being in the front row is being served first sometimes. However, a downside of inter-European business class is the standard economy seats to which I am wider by about 7 inches or 17 centimeters. So, even though I was served first, I had to wait for the cart to be moved so I could stretch my shoulders out. For supper, we were served in a mousse-bouche of feta, pesto, and strawberries. There was a chicken dish with chicken in some sort of a squash consomme. The chicken was good and not overdone, but the carrots were a bit soft. It was while I was eating this that I learned that there is a certain degree of flex afforded by these kinds of tray tables that became very apparent whilst I tried to cut my food. After serving, the flight crew brought around finished Riska bread, which went well with the meal. I was offered another drink and went with a red wine, which is Fender branded and says it's from Spain. So I'm not sure what kind of wine it was. I finished it off with a chocolate bar and ordered another glass of blueberry juice because, well, it's the finished thing to do, right? Or maybe I just enjoyed the first glass. I've arrived in Helsinki. Um, I've got my 17 hour layover until I leave tomorrow. So I'm gonna head over to my hotel a couple hours of sleep and then we'll explore around Helsinki tomorrow. Um, it's like 35 degrees outside of course I uh, checked my jacket but uh, we are walking to our hotel because uh, it's only like a kilometer from the airport and uh, taxi rates instead of a five kilometer radius are just outrageous and also the hotel doesn't have a uh, taxi service so um, this is fine. This is, this is great. So, update. There's like a gravel road that we're walking on. And in this gravel road, there's all these icy patches. So, that's great. I woke up to a rather generic, overcast, snowy Helsinki day. But, not wanting to waste any of the short time that I had on the ground here, I headed over to the subway station and caught a train into the city to walk around for a few hours and take in the sights. Welcome to Helsinki. Um, it's a very chilly morning. I am standing on a dock in a very frozen over Helsinki Harbor. Um, glad I took this time to get out and explore the city a little bit. Um, just getting to take in a few of the sites before I have to get back to the airport to catch my flight. Um, it's very, very open, a lot of pedestrian friendly areas. So if you get a chance uh, and you get a layover in Helsinki, I would definitely take the train. Um, it's only a 30 minute train ride. It's not bad. Um, I think it's going to cost me about eight euros total. So uh, it's definitely worth doing. With our afternoon of exploring Helsinki complete, 
we're headed back to the airport where we'll find our way to a lounge and do a little bit of lounge hopping before we catch our flight. I am back in the Helsinki airport. I'm a little bit confused in trying to find the lounge at first. Um, I followed the signs that I was looking for for the Finnair lounge and I was pointed towards gate 22. Apparently that is not the main lounge. Uh, the main lounge is actually through the border uh, over in the 50 gates. So I am now headed that way and uh, I hope to save you a little bit of confusion if you come this way in the future. The Finnair Lounge in the Helsinki Airport has two lounges in it. There's the Business Class Lounge and the Platinum Wing. The Platinum Wing is a bit of a lounge within a lounge, reserved for One World Emerald members who are traveling on a Business Class ticket. Today I was able to access it by using my One World Emerald status, so that I could show you around for a little bit. very clean and has a true Nordic feel to it with light wood accents contrasted with both dark and light fabric chairs. There's a vast bar area with a wide variety of drink options and there's a wonderful food spread with several food options for any one palette that you might have. Located near the food area there's a dining area with a la carte dining where I immediately sat down. I was approached by a waitress who offered me something from the bar and handed me a paper menu. On this paper menu, there were several food options. I went with a reindeer burger with a lingonberry aioli. I have to say, the burger was absolutely delicious, if not a little bit messy to eat. Following my lunch, I set off to explore what might be the most unique feature of this airport lounge, a sauna. I was a bit disappointed that due to the early afternoon departure of my flight, I wouldn't be able to visit a sauna in Helsinki itself. So, I was very excited to learn that the folks at Finnair had me covered. Even though I didn't bring sauna attire, there was no need to worry because the staff at the Platinum Wing had me covered. There was a changing room complete with lockers to store my bags and towels and slippers to change into for my trip to the sauna. The actual sauna itself isn't very big. It is maybe big enough for three or four people to fit into. There's a large area to hang out between sauna sessions and the staff keep this area stocked with cool refreshments like sparkling water and soft drinks. With my sauna session complete, I stepped into one of the shower suites for a shower and to brush my teeth before I headed off to catch my flight. So, having explored everything that the Finnair Lounge has to offer, um, got to partake in a nice sauna, got a nice shower, and a good meal. Um, now it's time to head my gate. Um, my boarding pass says the boarding is supposed to occur an hour before departure. Uh, I'm finding it hard to believe but it says to proceed towards the gate, so we'll see if they're actually boarding, but uh, it's time to get over there and get on board this next flight over to Doha. After a short walk, I arrived at my gate where there was a bit of extra security screening. I'm so glad that I got to my gate early because after the screening, we were corralled into a small gate area that didn't seem big enough to hold the passengers of an A320, let alone an A330. Fortunately, there was a separate boarding area for the priority boarding group with few options for chairs, but the economy boarding area was standing room only. When it was finally time to board the flight, there was not clear instruction as to whom was to use which jet bridge. This caused a lot of confusion with people entering the business class cabin from both directions. As there was not enough space to pass in the narrow aisle, this resulted in a bit of a traffic jam. Finally, after a short wait, I arrived at my seat for this flight, seat 2 Lima, a spacious air lounge seat on the starboard side of the aircraft. I stowed my bag in the spacious overhead bin and settled into my seat. As I took my time to admire the business class cabin on this aircraft, I was impressed with how open, spacious, and bright it feels. It definitely gives an elegant feel and vibe to anybody who's sitting in the cabin. The layout of the Air Lounge Business Class cabin with Finnair is pretty basic, with seven rows of four seats in a 1-2-1 configuration. 
The outside seats in the A or the L configurations are great for solo travelers and offer a lot of privacy, where the center seats in the D or H are great for couples with a removable divider for privacy. There is a good bit of separation between the first row of seats and the galley. Being seated in the second row, I really didn't hear any noise coming from the galley. And towards the back of the business class cabin, row 7 is separated from the premium economy cabin by another galley area. As I started to explore my seat, I found that there was a lot of storage space in this seat. On the seat level, there is a hatch that pops up and had enough room for me to store my laptop, tablet, and a few smaller items. Behind this, there is a slot for the safety information bulletin, where I also stashed the menu that was provided to me by Finnair, and to the left of it is the footwell where I stashed my duvet and pillow until I would need them later in the flight. There is a separate seat belt located here as well for the, when the seat is in bed mode. This belt was very comfortable and located exactly where my waist would be as I slide into the footwell. Towards the head of the seat, there is a separate storage space for headphones where the cord connects to the infotainment system. I found that there was even enough space in this cabinet for my separate Bluetooth headphones to be stored at the same time as the Finnair provided headphones. Above this hatch, there is an adjustable reading light that swivels to the left and the right and also has an adjustable brightness setting. Situated in my seat now, I was once again offered a pre-departure beverage and of course I went for the blueberry juice, which was yet again served in the iconic Finnair glassware. As I stretched my feet out, there was plenty of space to stretch out while facing forward. However, the flip-up section of the seat for bed mode got in the way of me being truly comfortable in this configuration. As you can see here, my toes are a little jammed up in the seat. Settling with my pre-departure beverage, I took some time to explore the menu provided by Finnair. It not only provided the food menu options, but also listed the amenities, as well as the amenities that were available upon request, such as chapstick from the flight crew. While settled in my seat, I was able to kick back and relax for a bit before the plane pushed back, taxied, and took off into an overcast Helsinki afternoon. Got settled in. I got all my stuff into the overhead bins, um, situated in for a nice long flight. Um, first impressions on the seat. Um, in all, it's pretty roomy. Um, I do like these very large walls here. It makes it very private. Um, even standing up doing a little filming I can't really see anybody else anywhere in the cabin so uh, that's definitely a plus. And then uh, as far as the leg room goes, um, leg room's pretty good. Um, it's this little pad that kind of holds your feet down so you can't really kick your toes up a little bit. It's a minor nuisance. Um, and all I don't think it really matters. Uh, I'll let you know later. Um, as far as with my feet up, there's plenty of room there. Um, this foot cavity is huge. It's part of this uh, motorless system that Finnair has gone to. One thing I will say is as a larger shouldered individual, um, when I am up against this side, it kind of curves my, my shoulders just a little bit. Um, so if I sit forward like this, it's not bad. Um, but then if I try to kind of angle out towards the windows, it definitely kind of crunches on my shoulders. So uh, we'll see how that looks when, uh, when it's time to get into bed mode and see if that constrains me any. Um, it kind of feels like the distance between the two armrests is kind of narrow. So um, I'll let you know uh, how that works. Oh. I noticed far too long after they would have been useful that each of these seats had a step to assist with reaching the overhead bin space. I thought that was a well thought out and helpful feature. And with very little delay, our plane pushed back, taxied to the runway, took off into the overcast, hazy, rainy Helsinki afternoon sky. We're off and bound for our destination of Doha, Qatar. Now airborne, I took a second to browse the IFE screen. Since these new seats are a bit 
you might say, revolutionary, there was a nice short video on how to operate them. Granted, I found that the flight staff were more than willing to assist in showcasing the features of the air lounge seat. As I settled in for the long flight ahead, it was time to kick off my shoes and try on the Finnair branded slippers that adorned my seat when I first sat down. While these were comfy enough, they were a bit small for me and my wide feet. The seat side tray table was a bit awkward to figure out how to operate at first, but after I got the hang of it, it folded out to be a fairly wide table, and I really like this feature where you can have a half table and slide it way out of the way for any drinks or other items you might want. Flight crew then came around with yet another warm towel, a bowl of nuts, and a first beverage service. For this beverage service, I chose sparkling wine, which was given to me with a glass of sparkling water and this wonderful cobalt blue rocks glass. I took a brief moment to explore the IFE screen. There was a nice timeline of the entire voyage to come ahead, as well as a map feature. One thing that I really liked that I didn't get any footage of was that the map had a kids feature, which had the airplane as a pterodactyl instead of an aircraft. I thought it was a nice touch for families. The first meal service came around. For this I chose to have the beef cheek with mixed vegetables and a squash puree. The beef was very tender and absolutely delicious. I paired this with a red wine and had another glass of sparkling water to stay hydrated. The appetizer was the same pesto puree from last night's flight. And there was a smoked salmon, shrimp, and trout salad with cucumber and horseradish puree. Flake crew came around after the meal offering and offered warm rolls. I again chose to go with the reiska bread. When I first came to my seat, I found a small amenity kit at each seat. This amenity kit contained some basic items such as a toothbrush. I have to give Finnair credit here. This toothbrush was made of a wooden material and is slightly eco-friendly. It seems that the common theme here is that Finnair likes to use eco-friendly products. There was an eye mask, which would help you get to sleep in the brightest cabin, perfect for this afternoon's flight. When I first arrived at my seat, I noticed this amenity kit. I pushed it to the side until now, but as I was getting ready to catch a few hours of sleep, I went through it. There were some basic items, including a wooden toothbrush. It seems that Finnair chooses to go with eco-friendly items in their kit. There was an eye mask, which was soft enough, and a card advertising items that were available at the crest of the flight crew, such as lip balm. Finally, there were earplugs, in case you might come across some noisy neighbors that you want to get some reprieve from. As the flight continued on its southbound course, I converted the seat into bed mode. To do this, I flipped a lever on the side of my seat and manually flipped a panel up. You know, that one panel that had been pressing my toes down for the past several hours? Finally, I found a use for it. Secondly, there's a switch on the side tray which actuates a section of my seat and creates a fully flat sleeping area. I laid out mattress toppers and a duvet that I was provided with and slipped down into the footwell to catch a few hours of sleep. As I slid into the footwell, I noticed that while there was plenty of length to stretch out my 6 foot 2 or 188 centimeter body, the footwell felt cramped and for side sleepers there might not be enough room for your feet if you lay on your side. As far as shoulder room goes, the space provided in the flat part of the seat was just wide enough for my 24 inch or 61 centimeter shoulders, but there was not much extra room to spare here. After a few hours sleep, I woke up to the second meal service. I have to say that I was a bit disappointed in the cold, dry sandwich that I was offered and felt that for a business class product, Finnair really could have done better here. As we made our final approach into Doha, I reflected on the flight. I'd like to thank the cabin crew on both of these flights for the wonderful service they provided. In Helsinki and Geneva, lounge offerings were relaxing, and as for the seat, I found it to be very private and roomy enough to catch some sleep. There was plenty of storage and the upholstery offered a quiet oasis for the duration of the flight. Given a chance, I'd certainly fly with Finnair again in their Air Lounge product. Thanks for coming along with me. 
If you liked tonight's video, be sure to like and subscribe to follow along in my future travels. Until the next adventure, so long.